Okay, this is it. So this is my follow-up video after the last honey extraction that I did back in September. And we're now in the month of October and this is the second extraction. So I want to talk about some lessons learned and some things to look forward to in future extractions with your flow frames after you've been through a cycle the first time. Now this is a look back. These um, bees are cleaning out cells that have been extracted. You can see there's propolis, that orange stuff down between the two flow frames to the right of the screen. And you can see that the bees were inside there licking out the cells and cleaning them and getting them ready. In this particular sequence, I'm showing you through one of the side panels of a flow frame. And these are flow hive supers you can see that the wax has all been drawn out. Now something interesting happened in subsequent uh, honey extraction processes with the flow frames. And that's what I'm gonna share with you in this video. The bees are working gangbusters. Notice that all the honey is a very light yellow color now. Uh, the source for the honey has changed from goldenrod to primarily asters. There's several varieties of asters and there's white clover and there's alfalfa. So these are the primary nectar sources now in my part of the country and of course we're in October. These flow frames are not ready to go but I'm just showing you I have several flow hives and flow supers and this way I'm able to make comparisons. So the bees are still filling this one. What I wanted to do is take you back to the same flow hive that I used before in my previous video when I showed the honey extraction. This is just a sequence I decided to show you some close-ups of the bees. Behavior on the landing boards, it's all the same. We have guard bees, you see the drones with the oversized eyes there. You see the Cheeto puffs of pollen that are coming in on the hind legs of the field bees. And uh, we just have a lot of activity going on. The nectar flow is still going strong. Uh, we are in October, but the weather is warm. And I want to show you this behavior because we're going to make a comparison to before and after honey extraction from this particular honeybee colony. Everything is busy. You notice whenever I uh, do anything with my honeybees, if I'm going to take a top off or if I'm going to be inspecting hives, I do this in the early afternoon, hopefully on clear sunny days, and that way most of the worker bees are out in the field foraging and collecting resources for this honeybee colony. And you'll see that some of the workers that are coming in from the field not only have honey pouches, not honey, but uh, pollen packs on their legs, but they also have pollen all over their bodies. This is a prime time for them to bring in pollen resources that will be used later to raise baby bees. Now, each of my honeybee hives, I have the lower entry board, standard landing board, and I also have an upper entrance like this. And you'll find out that a lot of the field workers come in through this upper opening, even though it's not ideal, they're all jamming in and it's a big competition for bees going out and going in. They're going straight to the supers and straight to the upper portions of the colony without having to track through the brood frames, which are down below, generally on the first brood box is where most of the brooding activity is happening. And that's where the queen spends most of her day. So the field bees aren't tracking up the living room with their dirty feet. Now, I just give you a quick uh, shot of my little weather station here. It's 74 degrees, it's sunny, it's 63% humidity, and it is October 4th of 2016. So what's remarkable about this colony, if you watched my previous video and you saw me draw all the honey off, we drained seven flow frames, and uh, all of those frames have been refilled again and recapped with honey, and it's only October 4th. So this colony is extremely strong. And I'm showing you, before we get into it, the landing board, the behavior's normal. If you watched my previous video, after we extracted seven frames, honey dripped down inside the colony, inside the brood frames and down to the bottom board, and the bees actually evacuated the hive. 
so that they could dry out. And they were about 24 hours cleaning up the hive on the inside before all those bees went back in. So this time, according to the flow people, if I extract from the same frames again, so the second and subsequent extraction cycles that I do with the flow frames should result in less honey dripping down inside. So that's what we're going to find out today. So here again, I've set up my little bench and I'm pulling an actual gallon size jug because if you recall in the previous video, I got about a quart and a half from each flow frame. But looking at the flow frames now, I noticed that not only did they recap after filling the flow frames again, but they extended the cells a little longer. So I'm expecting to get actually more honey out of each frame on this second cycle. And if what the flow people told me is true, during this cycle, there should be little to no honey draining down inside and therefore the bees should not be evacuating to the front of the hive again as they did before. So let's find out. And I'm showing you of course the whole, this portion of the apiary has seven colonies in it and all the bees are very active. People are always concerned, don't the bees come into the back? Well, not really. The sky is full of bees flying here right now and once again, the only thing that harasses me behind the beehive when I'm working with the flow frames are those pesky yellow jackets. Little wasps that show up and they're constantly on the hunt. Now these three frames are the ones that I'm going to extract from. They are the exact same frames that I extracted from in September. So the recovery cycle was very fast when the bees aren't having to work up and seal the flow frame mechanism as they did for the initial draining cycle. So we're opening up the base plugs again and you can see the weep holes that are established the two left sides you can actually see through and you can even see worker bees already trying to stick their tongues out. I also want you to look in and see that there is debris inside the flow frames. That is ground up pieces of propolis and little bits of wax. That is going to come out with the honey that we drained this time. And this is just a close up to show you the little worker bee there sticking her tongue out to see what's going on now that we've pulled those plugs. But you can see the particles in there, they are gonna come out with the raw honey. And of course this one is sealed, but when we put in the extraction drain tube, the little tongue at the bottom of it is going to penetrate this wax and it's going to make it so that uh, any excess honey left can drain off. Some people talk about, well, you put these flow frames in and there's plastic. How do the bees communicate harmonically? We know that bees vibrate when they get on honeycomb and that they communicate in the darkness of the hive through vibration. And so there's a resonance that sets up in honeycomb. Now, the thing is, honeycomb in the supers where the honey is stored, honey is sound dampening. So there isn't going to be any waggle dancing going on up in the flow super where whether it's plastic or whether it's natural honeycomb, they don't go up to where the honey is stored and do a waggle dance on the surface there. Most of the waggle dancing and the communication through vibration occurs down in the brood frames. So flow supers don't necessarily impede that. Honey attenuates sound and isn't a place where they're doing resonance communication anyway. Um, I really enjoy looking inside and seeing the honey drip down. I know, we see it all the time, but that doesn't make it any less cool. Another thing I'm noticing is that the honey this time looks much more viscous than it did in my draw off back in September. You may recall that we used the uh, refractometer and read it at about 17.5% water. This looks like it's going to have a much lower moisture content than the previous honey that we extracted. Another thing that we notice when we're looking at this, all the frames are the same color. So we don't have kind of the unique individual honey per frame that we uh, 
saw previously. So combining two frames into one one gallon container is not going to ruin the distinctive flavor and uh, aspects of that honey frame by frame. And also notice this time I'm activating half of the flow frame at a time instead of opening the whole thing up. We're going to see how much honey we get in this gallon jar. It's a glass jar that I just got on Amazon. So there it goes. You might be tired of watching honey come out of a flow hive and out of a beehive. Um, I never get tired of seeing it. It's amazing. And what is absolutely extraordinary is that the bees in this colony restored that honey so fast. And remember, we're pulling the exact same frames that we did just a few weeks ago. Because we want to, of course, test out whether or not we get a repeated result with the bee behavior and with the leaking down into the colony as we did previously. So that again, I'm showing you the front of the colony and the back at the same time. Um, I don't want to shame anyone. I, you know, I go to my bees and I attend to my bees without, uh, you know, the full um, protective gear that a lot of people want to wear. Don't let someone make you feel bad. If, if you're more comfortable wearing a full beekeeper suit and leather gloves and if you want to wear the veil, do that. That's completely a personal preference. If you feel safer being around your bees and you want to work with your hives, and you want to wear all the protective gear that's that's made and available go ahead and do it um, don't let anyone shame you into going out there in just a t-shirt I prefer to do it that way just because it's comfortable um, and I've been around bees for many years so it doesn't bother me I can read the bees and I know when they're getting a little heated up and a little defensive and I certainly understand when it's time to walk away and I'm not against putting on a veil or some protective gear if I start picking up some aggressive guard bees there. I know, people don't like it when you say they're aggressive, so we will say defensive guard bees. And here's the honey coming out. It is super light. It's fantastic. I mean, this time you're clover and aster honey. Some people say that, you know, asters will granulate or solidify fairly fast. That's going to be a problem if that happens inside your flow frames. Now you may ask, why am I taking off honey again? Aren't I taking away the resources that these bees are going to need to get through winter? If you recall in the previous video, I said, I like to leave about 100 pounds of honey on a colony to get them through winter. That is an insurance policy that they will have resources to get them through a long, cold, snowy winter when they can't get out and they can't get the resources that they need. That is overkill for most of the colonies in my area. Some of the colonies I have are not that large, so they may get through the winter with 25 pounds of honey. I've had swarms that I've collected at the end of the year. What I'm showing you right now is I use bamboo, um, kebab sticks and I use them like chopsticks. If I get a yellow jacket in my honey and I did today, I use those to pull the little yellow jacket wasp out of the honey. And here we're just showing they're draining. There's a little bee down on the right hand side here that is trying to get in early and start doing maintenance there. They really can't fully access the cells while they're in their open position. So as soon as we put them back in the closed position, uh, the bees will go right into uncapping and doing maintenance again. So now here's the thing too. You can't start a flow frame and then get, let's say, a couple cups of honey out of it and then close it off and retain and restore the system to where it will hold the remaining honey in that frame. You need to be prepared to remove all the honey from that frame at once because even after you activate it and close it and restore the frames to their original position, um, it does not stop the flow of honey because you've disrupted all of the work that the bees have done to seal those frames before they're activated. So once you open the frames, you break those seals 
and the honey is going to continually pour out whether you close it or not. And you definitely want to leave the drain tubes in there until all the honey has drained out. This is unbelievable. I expected, um, you know, a quart and a half per frame. And here I'm getting a full gallon. So that's a lot of honey from just two frames in a flow super. And it's, it's heavier honey because it is um, presenting with kind of a lower moisture content. So it's running slower, it's thicker, and it's heavier, and there's more of it. And the reason there's more of it is because there's a second time. Now, I'm showing you the front because on my previous honey extraction with this same colony, by this time, the bees were already rolling out of the hive with honey drizzled all over them. They had been gorging on honey, so even the ground in front of the hive was covered with bees that couldn't fly because they had all gorged on honey. So I'm showing you hive number seven and hive number six for comparison so that you can see that this cycle, what the flow people told me to expect was absolutely right. The second time around, extracting from the same frames resulted in almost no honey leaking inside the colony. So the bees had virtually nothing to deal with as far as cleanup inside. So I didn't have to worry, although we're in perfect weather conditions again, it's only going to be in the 50s overnight. So if the bees had moved out and collected on the front of the hive as they did before, um, now they're, they're not in jeopardy but I'm seeing through this cycle that the bees really did fix the flow frames and seal up their exterior to the point where it no longer leaks through down into the hive. And I did tilt the entire hive back three degrees, not the full five, but I did tilt it back three degrees for this extraction. And look, now that the frames are restored to their closed position, the bees are immediately going back in and if you look you can see it's hard to catch it because they're down on the right is a bee running away with a wax cap so they're pulling the caps right away they're hauling them away eventually workers will fly out of the hive with them and dispose of them they don't reuse cap wax but they are cleaning the frames and getting the cells ready again to receive more honey a full gallon I have to tell you that I'm just amazed by the amount of honey that came out of two frames and when it starts dripping like this I think you could consider that uh, you could restore those frames and put them in their closed position take the tubes out and put the plugs in and now I have a single frame and I have a half gallon glass container there to collect it and we'll see if this one is the same as the other two. If it's the same, then this half gallon should fill all the way to the very top from a single frame. And it looks like it's getting there. This is all real time. Of course, they do cutaways because they don't want you to have to watch every step of the way. And you see the particles that are coming through. There is some aeration in the honey and they're tiny particles. This is a little yellow jacket that I pulled out of the honey. And of course the bees are going to clean them up even though this is one of their arch enemies. And believe it or not, this yellow jacket actually flew away later. I thought it was dead from suffocation by having honey stuck all over it. Here we go. Can't believe it. A half gallon jar, one frame, and it filled it all the way up. That's a lot of honey, and it's more than I gathered in the first time around. So I have to tell you, I'm absolutely impressed. Why am I taking this shot? Just because it looks cool. I like the way the sunlight is coming through these jars of honey. Uh, the honey is actually the same color in both jars but uh, the one on the left was just in the shade. This is it. Uh, what I want you to see is this is my entire extraction kit. 
I'm not to, you know, to harvest the honey. I came out and set up a board, tilted the hive back, have my little chopsticks there to collect any angry, you know, yellow jackets that are getting in my honey. Um, I have the extension tubes to drain it off, the, you know, needle nose pliers to open it. And uh, that's as simple as it gets for extracting honey from a beehive. You open the back, see that it's capped, see that the honey's ready, get your jars ready, and extract one or two frames. You do not have to pull frames from the whole hive. And again, we're looking at the front of the colony. No change in behavior. Remember, these are asters, and uh, the bees are working the asters, and they're working the alfalfa, and they're working the clover. That's why the honey is so light this time of year. And there's plenty left for them, so they are still going to recover, even though this is surplus honey. This is not the honey that they needed to survive. Of course, we have to take it all back to the kitchen table. We're going to get the refractometer, and I'm going to put honey on it. And we're going to see, look how viscous this is. I'm thinking that this is going to be really good. The less water you have in your honey, of course, the better. But uh, this is really thick. It's really good. And there you have it. It's just a little over 15% water. That is excellent for honey. If you recall in the previous video, it was right at 17.5%. Um, this is much better honey. We got more of it. It's late season honey and it's consistent. That's fantastic. I have to tell you that I'm very, very happy with the way the flow frames and the flow hive system is working out. Lots of resources. The bees are going to go right back out there and they're going to still collect uh, plenty of honey and nectar. Um, I can't say anything bad right now. It worked out fantastic. And I want to thank you for watching my videos and thank you for learning. I wish you all happy beekeeping.